in the topic today that I'm going to take, I'm taking one of such topic which is used very commonly in our field and that is celestial sphere. Now, I'm going to explain you first what actually I have drawn over here. This interior circle which I have drawn is the Earth's sphere and the exterior one is the obviously celestial sphere. Now, since this celestial sphere is being obtained by the expansion or surface expansion of the Earth sphere itself, hence there are a lot of similarities between these two. For example, the North Pole on the Earth sphere becomes the North Celestial Pole here. The South Pole's extension becomes the South Celestial Pole. The equator's expansion becomes the equinoctial. As I told, the surface expansion of the Earth was the one which, by which we obtained the celestial sphere. Hence, the center of this Earth and the celestial sphere remains the same. Now, the meridians that we call up here turns, on the expansion turns up to celestial meridian on the celestial sphere. Now, the declination circles that we are seeing, they are basically the expansion of the latitude circles. Okay? Now, this grid circle that you are seeing on this picture, the, this, the tilted one, now this is known as ecliptic. Now, what is ecliptic? Ecliptic is basically the annual apparent path of sun. Now, by annual apparent path, I mean it is basically being formed by the expansion of the Earth's orbit. And now, Earth's on its orbit revolves in, uh, in a period of one year, which is 365 days. Hence, this is also known as annual apparent path of sun. Now, when I say apparent, it clearly means virtual motion, a thing which is not permanent, but it is, some, it is in an observance with respect to the observer on the Earth. Okay? Now, the, this intersection point that you are seeing at this place, this point, this intersection of the ecliptic and the equinoctial, there are two intersections basically, one is down below, one is here. Now, since I told you this is the path on which sun apparently moves, so when it moves from south to north, yeah, when it crosses the equinoctial from south to north, then this intersection point is known as first point of Aries. And when it crosses from north to south, then this intersection point is known as first point of Libra. Now, Libra is not of navigational importance with respect to us. We only consider Aries. Now, this was the observer's meridian and the exterior one was the Greenwich meridian. So, the extension of this observer's meridian on the celestial sphere becomes the celestial meridian of the observer. And the extension of the Greenwich meridian on the celestial sphere becomes the celestial meridian of Greenwich. Now, this is a celestial body. Now, this celestial body, the meridian passing through it, the celestial meridian passing through this becomes the celestial meridian of the body. Now, the celestial meridian passing obviously through the first point of Aries is known as the celestial meridian of first point of Aries. Now, before going further, what I was actually going to take up now was how you define these different things, which I have written in green specifically, the declaration, SHA, LHA, GHA. One of the most common definitions in our field, we use it on a day to day basis, especially by side taking and side calculations and all. But a lot of time we tend to forget their actual meaning. So to remember them easily is what my basic topic was today. And that is what I am going to come through. Now, if you see the left hand side of this board, which I have, what I have written here is the parts and sequences to define anything or for any definition for that matter. Now, these are the three main sequences that we follow while defining any, any of the definitions. The first one is arc of, the second one is angle subtended and the third one as written here is contained between. Now, these three in the same sequence as they are written are being followed as I told you to define any definition. Now, before moving forward with this, I would like to take, uh, brief you about how to use them. See, suppose this is Earth. Now, this obviously is equator. Suppose here is a place say called A. And obviously this will be the parallel of latitude passing through it. Now, when we define a latitude, suppose in the form which I have written over here, obviously the first thing we need is arc. Now, we will come back to this side, I have clearly written here, hints to remember. Now when, you, when I go ahead of this, now hints to remember, in the column of hints to remember, I have clearly written, you have to check one of these two things with first. Whether the angle which you are going to define is being formed between vertically running things 
or between horizontally running things. So when I say vertically running, it simply means meridians because meridians are vertically running. And when I say horizontal, it simply means the latitude circles. They are horizontally running. So when I talk of latitude, obviously latitude angle is always formed between horizontally running things. So I'll come back again to this slide. Now when I say when I am fine with a, one of these two, key, with whichever we have to define, it is either between horizontally running or the vertical running. Then we'll move forward. Now, if I have identified as in case of latitude, it is formed between the horizontal running things, then I have clearly written in case of this, the arc will be formed of the meridian in case of earth, obviously. And if we are defining something on the celestial sphere, then it will be celestial meridian. And similarly, the second point was angle subtended. In this case, the angle will be subtended, obviously, at the center of the earth. Now, how? So, this is, as I said, the parallel of latitude, and suppose we have to define it. Now, this is the meridian passing through it. So, and suppose this is the central plane of the earth and this is the center. So, this angle, say you have written 20 degrees here. Now, this 20 degrees basically this angle which is being formed at the center of the earth by this arc. Now, this arc obviously is of the meridian. So, going back to the part where I have written how to define any definition and consulting it with this figure which I have drawn, I can clearly see it is the latitude can be defined as the arc of the meridian or angle subtended at the center of the earth contain a third part was contained between contained between the equator and parallel of latitude passing through that place so by now you might have must have realized it is one of the simplest ways to remember anything if you can judge the or analyze this factor with factors to remember which i have mentioned over here and if you can relate this with these sequences you can easily define anything so I'll move forward with this. Now, as I told you, latitudes replication on the celestial sphere is declination. Now, this also means the definition of declination will be very similar to that of latitude. The only difference would be wherever I called equator here, that will be called equinoctial there, and whatever I call to be meridian here, I'll call celestial meridian there. And the parallel of latitude on the earth would be defined as the parallel of declination on the celestial sphere. So Keeping these thoughts in mind, declination can simply again be defined with these sequences again. Now, R, in this case, it will be of celestial meridian. Angle subtension, as I told, center is the same, so it will definitely be at the center of the earth. And so, arc of the uh, arc of the celestial meridian or angle subtended at the center of the earth, that is this angle. So, arc of celestial meridian or angle subtended at the center of the earth, a third point was contained between, contained between the equinoctial and parallel of declination passing to the body. Simple definition for declination. I hope you can remember it now very easily. I'll move on with this. I'll move on to now SHA, LHA and GHA. Sequentially they are called as sidereal R angle, local R angle, Greenwich R angle. Before going into these definitions for them, I would like you to remember two basic points for them. The first one is from where they start off. So you can clearly see SHA starting off first point of Aries, LHA starting from the celestial meridian of the observer, this one, and GHA starting from the celestial meridian of Greenwich. And for that matter, they all will end definitely at the celestial meridian of body because for that matter, celestial sphere was being formed for the study of the body itself. Now, the second point to remember in these definitions is they all are measured westerly from the point they are starting off from. So SHA also westerly, LHA also westerly, and GHA also westerly as I have shown by the arrows also. Now when you, after you have remembered these points, we will again go back to our main basic which I started off from. I will define them in the same sequence again. Now these angles as we can see clearly are being formed between vertically running things which are obviously the celestial meridians in this case. So vertically running things I have clearly written out. Arc of will always be of equator in case of obviously again the earth and equinoctial in case of celestial, uh, celestial sphere and angle subtension will be again subsequently for equator it will be at poles for equinoctial it will be at celestial poles. Now for SHA, LHA and GHA since they are on the celestial sphere we have to go with these two. So I can start off again with this. So in case of SHA suppose arc of equinoctial or angle subtended at the celestial poles. Now third point again, contained between, we can read out it from here itself, contained between the celestial meridian of first point of Aries and that of the body measured westward from Aries. I'll move on to LH again. 
same similar kind of definition arc of equinoctial or angle subtended at the celestial poles third point again contained between now this is starting from the celestial meridian observer and that of the body again last measured westward from the observer now gha again its name only itself plays out the half part that is greenwich obviously it will be starting from greenwich so greenwich our angle can be defined again as arc of the equinoctial or angle at the celestial poles contained between the third point celestial meridian of greenwich and that of the body measured westerly from greenwich so i hope this part which i explained in this video could have cleared up a lot of doubts regarding how to remember the definitions how to remember them correctly if you follow this process you can never ever forget any definition you can whenever you need you can just on the side of a page you can draw this diagram and easily explain it to so anybody you will enjoy the video and it would have helped you in clearing off one of the very basic topic of our field please do not forget to subscribe to this video and leave your comments and suggestions below if you want me to discuss any of the topics that you uh, that uh, you have problem in do not uh, forget to send your query or those topics on the mail id mentioned over there for those of you going through this video in india i would like you all to inform that i also conduct classes located at navi mumbai the details of which are in this slide to follow so with this note i would like to sign off thank you have a good day goodbye see you next time with some of the basic of a field if you have any questions or suggestions please drop your comments below and we will get back to you at the earliest If you like this video please subscribe to Marine Insight channel and press the bell icon to get notified when we post such amazing videos please like comment and share this video and do not forget to subscribe to our channel